a warm welcome back to the channel of nonsense and a lay-by outside Chippenham, or if you're American, Chippenham. But anyway, I would argue that the BMW 3 Series is to BMW what the iPhone is to Apple. It's the core of the brand. And yes, it does get updated, not annually like the iPhone and not with an online presentation watched by millions of men with their trousers around their ankles applauding uh, everything that's happening on the screen. But yes, the G23 Series is three years old and it's having its life cycle impulse or LCI, AKA a facelift. So I'm gonna take you around this new facelifted three series, show you what's new and find out if it's better or if it's just as good as it was, which was very good. Let's go. I have this or a naked mannequin of Tim Apple? Let's find out. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, you'll know I have a thing for parking nice cars in muddy laybys, and it's autumn now, so I have no choice in the matter. But yeah, this new updated version of the 3 Series starts from £38,000, and I'm going to show you what's new in a quick fire montage. It's got slimmer LED headlights without the notch. It's got new sportier bumpers, which are covered in muddy water. It's got a bigger rear diffuser, which probably doesn't do an awful lot. It's got slimmer tail lights. Uh, it's got some new alloy wheel designs. These ones might actually not be new, sorry. It's got BMW's latest curved display and iDrive 8 infotainment system ripped out of the electric iX SUV. It's got a smaller gear knob. Right, this is what the interior of the new facelifted BMW 3 Series looks like. And by gum, it actually looks quite different to the previous one. The first thing you notice is the big old kind of robot dildo phallus gear knob for the automatic gearbox has gone. You've got a small little switch here. They've not really done much with the extra room that that gives you, but hey, so what? You've still got cup holders. You've still got wireless charging mat in there. But the big change are these two screens. This is iDrive 8, it's a curved display. I first used this on the BMW i4 and the BMW iX on the launch of those cars in Berchtesgaden in Germany over a year ago, and I was blown away. The amount of cool stuff in these menus, you just have to fiddle, it's way too much for a video, but they're really nice to use. You don't have to use the touchscreen, you've still got a rotary controller. BMW is phasing this out in some of its smaller, less expensive models, but um, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff you can do. You can set your charging strategies, you can live vehicle, check your tire pressure, all the usual stuff, that's not particularly interesting. Um, but it also has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It's got built-in Spotify. Look how good CarPlay looks on that screen. It is absolutely huge. It's 15 inches, I think. And the driver's display, I think, is 12. 12, it's 12 inches. It does lots of clever things, like it tells you if the traffic light in front of you is changing or if you're about to blow through a stop sign and crash into someone. BMW has ditched a few things though in bringing this to the three series. There's no more gesture control. Do you remember BMW tried to get you to do that for about 10 years to turn the volume up and down? Never worked very well and they've ditched it, which is quite bold, but they have also ditched most of the physical climate control buttons. So if you want to fiddle with your temperatures, you've got to do it on the screen or go in here and then turn the fans up and down everything on there, which is a bit of a shame. I want to be able to put my heated seats on using buttons there. This one's got heated steering wheel, which does have a physical button, but nothing for the seats. And it's a little bit of a shame because I just find that distracting. And I always thought BMW were masters of giving you eyes on the road control of your infotainment system, but that does seem to be waning a little bit. But yeah, looks really impressive, looks way more modern, and suddenly the pre-facelift car does look a bit dated, albeit, feels a bit more user-friendly in this one. But anyway, let's hop in the back and I'll show you what the back seats are like. Lots of people buy the BMW 3 Series as a company car, but that does mean those people then have to use it at the weekends for their families. So let's see what the back seat space is like. Obviously, this is the estate version called the Touring. It costs £1,400 more than the equivalent saloon. Um, but yeah, this is what the back seats look like. The seats have got quite a nice recline on them, so you feel really comfortable in the back. You've got two USB-Cs down there, 
and independent climate controls for your lucky rear seat passengers. You've also got reasonably sized door bins that can hold a big bottle and a little space there for the bags of Haribo your children will surely consume so they don't sleep at night. This one's got the upgraded calm and hard on sound system. But anyway, I'm gonna jump in the back and show you what a six foot three adult looks like in the back of the facelifted BMW 3 Series. This is what a six foot three adult looks like in the back, quite tired and haggard because uh, I've got two young children that like to sing the entire Frozen songbook at 2 a.m. together. But anyway, I've got loads of headroom. I've got plenty of knee room. I've got foot room. I've got elbow room. It feels cushy back here. And to be honest, I don't really need much more room than this. It almost makes me wonder why the 5 Series exists, because this is perfectly comfortable. I don't feel claustrophobic either. And I've got a little armrest in here as well, which has da -da -da -da, some cup holders. It's got some cup holders. I think the cup holders are broken or I'm a ham-fisted idiot and can't work them. But anyway, let's check out the boot and then we'll take it for a drive. Now, the beauty of having a reasonably big car like a 3 Series is that you can carry stuff. And the beauty of the 3 Series Touring is that you can open the rear window glass without having to open the boot. I can't get my words out today, excuse me. But yeah, BMW has been doing this gah, forever, it feels like. It's just a cool feature, only available on the estate. Now, being an estate, this has a 500 litre boot. At least it would do if it wasn't the plug-in hybrid 330E. It's only got a 375, I think, maybe 400 litre boot. It loses quite a bit of space because you haven't got much under boot floor storage. Only that half lit up because all the batteries are under that bit. The saloon version gets 480 litres, I think it is. And again, that will drop if you get that in 330E form. But it's a useful space. It goes really wide here. You've got some nets there and you've got the ability to remotely fold down the rear seats with electric switches rather than cable operated handles and you've got a 12 volt plug socket there so you plug in i don't know cooler boxes and things like that for your adventurous types yeah it's still a practical space slightly less practical if you get the hybrid now, you've probably got many questions about the quality of my opinion in this video. You might be thinking, Tim, why have you picked the 330E to show us? Because the 320D used to be king of the 3 Series. It used to be the most popular, the default choice for company car buyers. But now, because of company car tax rules, you're more likely to see a 330E on the road than the 320D because it's a plug-in hybrid. Therefore, you pay less tax on it, I think. But anyway, most popular 3 Series, I think, but the engine choice is still there. If you don't want one of these, you can get a 320D diesel, an M340D diesel, which is hilariously fast, four wheel drive, and does like 4.8 to 60, it's wicked, I love that car. On the petrol side, you get the yeah, 320i, 330i, and the M340i, which is again, four wheel drive, six cylinder petrol, and it's hilarious. I might stick a little clip of me driving that in during the driving bit if I go and have a go in that. But yeah, 330E is the most popular one. It's a hybrid with two litre petrol, and it can go about 30 miles on a single charge. But anyway, enough waffle, let's actually go and drive the thing. Right, let's go for a drive in the BMW 330e X Drive, blah, blah, blah. It's a BMW 3 Series. Anyway, you put your foot on the brake and you press the start button and you use this new stubby little gear selector to pull it back into D. It makes BMW's new electric -y noise and the fans go to full blast so you can't hear me. And I've got to use the touchscreen to turn them down because there's no physical fan knob, which is a little bit frustrating. Then I've got to touch up here again. I need to get back. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Apple CarPlay. There you go, my saviour. But anyway, then you just put your foot on the accelerator, not the brake. That's the one that makes you stop. And then we're off. And the first thing you notice when you get in a 3 Series, which makes it feel very different from any other car in this class, save for the Alfa Romeo Giulia, is that you sit nice and low and you can get the steering wheel out in your lap and it just feels really cocooning and sporty but that doesn't make it feel intimidating and big or anything like that. It just feels very homely, very cozy, and like you'd want to do big miles in it. I've got to stop to have my thing scanned. Hang on. Where was I? Oh yeah, that's it. Saying how easy it is to drive while simultaneously scraping the paintwork off on these gates. Lovely. But yeah, this 330E, you can creep around in electric power, which is, I guess, quite a nice relaxing thing. Now I'm gonna boot out this junction in a minute when this van has decided not to crash into me. Now, I've just accelerated quite briskly on electric power alone. Now, the petrol engine did kick in there, and I'm only doing 40 miles an hour, but it is really quite quiet and refined, so it's not one of those hybrids where you really know about it when the petrol engine kicks in because it deafens you with the song of its people. It just hums away quietly, a little reassuring background noise to your progress, but still, this 
just feels lovely. But yeah, we're onto a 60 limit. I put my foot down and it's quick. I'm really impressed with how quiet that petrol engine is in the cabin. The brakes, a little bit grabby at the top, but that's because you're doing some regeneration as well. But yeah, this already just feels like a 3 Series. And if you've never driven a 3 Series, a 3 Series feels just incredibly direct and lithe and sporty. And it encourages you to attack corners quite quickly. The steering doesn't have much feel to it anymore. And you'll find bearded motoring journalists with slightly whiter beards than mine saying, oh, steering feel isn't what it used to be. But look, series of sweeping bends, absolute confidence to tackle them at 60 miles an hour. And I'm on cold tires as well. It just feels planted, connected, and enjoyable. And like it wants to have some fun. It doesn't feel like, you know, I drove up here in my Skoda Superb. You drive that quickly and you feel like you're doing things against its will, which is always bad. This is a willing partner to whatever shenanigans you want to have in it. Let's talk about some boring practical things. The view out is very, very good. I can see all the way around really easily. The pillars actually feel quite thin for a modern car. So you're not going to be like, oh, oh, where's the front of it? Oh, where's the back of it? It's well thought out. You just get the sense that BMW's been perfecting the 3 Series recipe time and time again. Like your auntie's Christmas cake. It gets better every year. You might not like Christmas cake, but you will like a 3 Series. One accusation you could level at most M Sport BMWs in the past was that the suspension was a little bit too sporty for daily life. This has got adaptive dampers. I've got them in the comfort mode and by Jove, they work. I'm on a really bumpy farm track with some dogs and some people wearing tweed body warmers. And uh, yeah, I'm not being jiggled around at all. I can sense the bumps, but it's definitely not uncomfortable. I would recommend trying to get the adaptive dampers on these if you can. It just gives you the choice of softening it up or going firm if you want to go full loony. And normally, I never firm a normal car suspension up because it's a normal car. I'm not setting lap times, but the 3 Series responds really well. It's being driven quickly. I'd say one of the most impressive things about this 330E is the punch you get off the line. As you might expect with an electric motor helping drive you down the road, you get some pretty instant acceleration. It tails off when you put your foot down at, say, 50, but from zero miles an hour, it's impressive. And I'm starting to feel the benefits of having a four-wheel drive version on these greasy roads. It's punchy, it's nice. Negatives. The steering wheel is a bit too thick. That's a BMW thing. And I know it's a bit weird to whinge about the thickness of a rim, but it just feels a little bit ungainly and I don't feel quite as in control as I would with a thinner steering wheel, but it is mostly placebo. Road noise is really good. I know I've not taken it on a motorway while filming, but I did a bit of dual carriageway work earlier. And look, 60 miles an hour, you just can't hear any wind noise. 70 miles now, you can't either. And you don't get much road noise either. It's a really, really refined car, which is impressive. And that's not really changed for the facelift at all, but it's just a reminder of how solid the 3 Series is. BMW didn't have to fiddle with this very much, and they've not really fiddled with the driving dynamics at all because they already had a winner, frankly. But anyway, I'm going to go and hop in the M340i now to see what the most potent version of the 3 Series is like before you get onto the M3. And I've driven the M340i before. I know I'm going to be giggling. Let's go. Right, you join me in another BMW 3 Series that's been facelifted. This time it's not the 330e plug-in hybrid. It's not a 320d diesel. It's the range-topping M340i X-Drive, which means I've got a 3-litre turbocharged straight-six petrol engine with 382 horsepower from memory and more torque than the planet. So this should be nice and quick, but it's also many other things. It is soulful. Oh, it's playful. And that engine really does dominate things. I've driven this engine in loads of other things in the 440i, in the 240i. It is old school in the best possible way. It's a reminder that big six cylinder petrol engines are some of the very best engines in the world. And sure, we're moving towards electrification, but you can't beat that surge of torque. And, oh. <laughs> and the noise, even though it's partially faked, is just, it's just joyous, frankly. And it almost makes me a little bit weepy. Now, another one of my favorite things about these cars is they feel alive. Despite being four wheel drive, if you put the traction control in its sport setting, I know that these will do little or big skids, depending 
on how you like your skids. And if you don't like skids, it'll just look after you and it won't scare you either. But I'm on a country road now. I'm in sport mode. I am doing the speed limit, sort of. And it's just a phenomenally good way to cover country ground. Country ground? It's a quick way to get across your estate, is what I'm trying to say. The brakes are great. The steering still hasn't got much feel to it. But as a flipping good car, this engine, this powertrain, it's basically right up there. If I had to go out today and buy a new car for, say, 50, 60 grand, this one's 65, but it's got quite a few options on it, I would get an M340i X-Drive Touring. This one is the Touring. It's the estate version. In a way, it sort of feels like an old-school M3, like an E36 M3, but with some cotton stuff down its exhaust because it is quite muted, the noise. But you still get a sense that six cylinders. It's a great thing really great thing still lovely to drive the facelift hasn't changed anything about it really other than it feels more high tech in here it's the theme of this video isn't it anyway let's go back to me for an outro another thing that's new for the facelift 3 series is a new range of matte paint colors this is frozen pure gray metallic 2 or something it's three grand option and uh yeah so i'm not on my gimbal it's just be a bit wobbly but as you can see it is a lovely matte finish now BMW used to do this on special editions of the M3 and things like that, but now you can option it, I think, on most of the 3 Series range. Maybe it's only the M340i's and D's, but looks lovely. Part of me thinks that's going to be a pain to live with if you get tree sap or bird poo on it, because you can't really polish it, I don't think. But anyway, all of you matte paint finish fans, you can correct me in the comments. I'm looking at you, people from BMW forums. I love you. So in conclusion, is the 3 Series still one of the best cars you can buy? Well, it's so good. The cows want it back. Sorry. And they can have it back because there's no vegan leather option. It is all real leather. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But yeah, it's still a phenomenal car for company car buyers, family car buyers alike. It's got a great choice of engines, which hasn't really changed. The interior is more high tech than ever. Calm down, lads. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame some of those climate control buttons have been lost and you have to fiddle through some of the touchscreen menus to operate it. But to drive it is still sublime, even if you're not a petrol head, even if you're not used to driving lots of cars, you'll jump in this and know it feels special from the moment you turn a wheel. And that's what the 3 Series has always been about. Couple with that, the fact it's practical, quite efficient, and just feels high quality. And it is still a bloody winner. Go and buy these instead of SUVs, people. Unless you want an SUV, in which case, do what you want. It's your money, and I can't tell you what to do. Anyway, I'm getting drowned out by the angry herds over there. Thank you for watching. If it's been helpful, please hit like. Do subscribe to the channel. Go down in the comments and leave me the German word for noisy udders. See you next time. Should we go meet them? Should we go meet the gang? Which one of you is Clarissa? No? Do you like the 3 Series? They've gone all shy. Excuse me, do you like the BMW 3 Series? You're an Audi A4 cow. Okay, ooh, no, they took offense. Right, I'm going before I get charged. Goodbye.